Let's talk about aftercare and how important this topic is. So the main sessions that I see that are most vital, um, and there might be more, the ones that I see that are most vital for aftercare is things like yoni massage, any kind of kink, like you have a, uh, a BDSM session or you have a rope session or you have um, even like a medicine session. These kind of sessions are really important that if you're going to facilitate, if you're going to be the practitioner to um, guide somebody through one of these or massage, a yoni massage or something like that, you have to understand it opens, it does something to the psyche, to the heart, to the soul, to the whole entire being. That aftercare isn't just right afterward what the person, like what you do. Like a lot of times with uh, yoni massage, you're, you're giving them grounding pressure, or you might cuddle them, or you might just give them some space to lay on their own, or if you're in a BDSM session, you'll find out what, how to take care of them, whether it's... Um, holding them, caressing them, giving them a little bit of space. Some people love to talk um, after a session. Some people are just like, just, just leave me alone and I'll, I'm going to come back and I'll talk to you later. Or everybody has a different way of aftercare. But there's also another part of aftercare that is vital. And that is the next day. Like for the yoni massage, the session really isn't over for a woman for about 24 hours. Like she can actually feel a shift around the 24 hour period that it's not complete until about 24 hours. Everyone's different. I've known women that have taken longer than 24 hours for the session to be over, for them to really kind of come out of the integration period and stuff like this. Um, with kink, with ropes, with any of that, the next day, both of these kinds of sessions, and definitely medicine sessions, you contact as a practitioner, as a massage therapist, as the healer, as a space holder, you, it is our job to call, to text, to check in with that person. It affects our whole entire nervous system when we go through practices like this. And even if you are well-versed and you have had, let's say, 20 medicine sessions or you've had 20 yoni massages or been tied up 30, 40, 50 times, it's important that the next day the practitioner checks in with that person. It calms them. It makes it where they, they feel connected to, they feel cared for. And even if they're like, I'm fine, I'm good, there's something like, oh, okay. There's a connection of like, okay, they checked in, great, I'm fine. Sometimes, if they don't check in the nervous system, maybe not that next day, but the second day or the third day, or even a week later, the nervous system starts to go wonky because they've not been able to share, they've not been able to express what has happened since. And so it calms the nervous system knowing that just somebody is there that, that has checked in with them. Like for me, it's like I check in with people the next day, and if they're good, I check in with them on day three. If they're still good, then I may check in with them on day seven. I might not. But day one, definitely. Day three, um, most of the time. And then optionally, day seven. Because a lot can come up between day one and day three after the session. And I want to make sure for me and my clients, I want to make sure that they are calm. They're grounded. They are they feel supported, they know that I'm here, and that you know they stay calm, that they don't need more stuff going on in their, system, their nervous system to shake, rattle, and roll them. They need to know that I'm here. They, as a practitioner, we need to know, our clients need to know that we're here for them. It brings peace, it gives a more peaceful integration, it gives a more peaceful um, time to just like go into whatever is opened. And so, if you do this kind of work, please take in mind that half the session is doing the session, the other half the session is aftercare. If you can't do aftercare, very, very key thing, if you can't do aftercare, tell the person before you do the session, like, hey, 
I'm going out of town or I'm going to be in a silent meditation. I'm not going to be able to take care of you. I'm not going to be able to do that aftercare. Let them know ahead of time. So then they get to choose like, well, I'd rather wait until you, you can be there. Or And it also calms their mind. So they might not need that day of aftercare. But it gives them this idea of like, oh, okay, I'm taken care of because I know my practitioner is not going to be there for me. Great. I know ahead of time. Or I get a cho choice to do it a different day or something like this. So I know I'm going to be taken care of um, afterward. Um, and it just calms the whole entire system down. It's really, really important. Um, but if you aren't going into the silence or if you're not going into something like this, please, if you do this kind of work, make sure you have the next day to check in with the person, at least the next day. The other things are optional, but at least the next day, check in with your client, check in with them to support their healing process. Okay. If you have any questions, put them below, like this. My name is Heather Ray Dawn. Um, I am a healer, Tantra educator, a relationship coach, and a woman's power and pleasure coach. If you have any questions, let me know. Okay.